Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. For more than 50 years, Wild Kingdom explored wildlife and our natural world. Tonight's episode, and many others, focus on the timeless value of wildlife conservation. Wild Kingdom played a critical role in changing public attitudes about the importance of animals for the health of our planet and our own quality of life. We challenge viewers to learn about animals and get involved in conservation in their local communities. That call to action resulted in more visits to local zoos, nature preserves, and even observing animals in their natural habitats. And that connection with animals benefits all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Australia, beyond any doubt, has some of the most remarkable animal life in the world. The great gray kangaroo, for example, is a marsupial who carries her young in a pouch on her abdomen. The young kangaroo, called a joey, uses his mother's pouch as a refuge from danger, even when he gets to be as large as this one. Many extremes occur among animals living in the natural habitat of the gray kangaroo, and some of them have names as unusual as the animals themselves. Names such as betong, wombat, numbat, mollyfowl, and kookaburra. These are only a few of the creatures that live in the eucalyptus forest in the south central part of Western Australia. It's a remarkable natural habitat, and we call it the land of the kangaroo. The early morning sunlight streaking through the branches of the great eucalyptus trees finds the forest quiet for a time. The nocturnal animals have settled down and the creatures of the day are rousing. The kookaburra shrugs off his sleepiness and a koala mother begins to feed on the tender, succulent leaves of the eucalyptus not disturbed at all by the sounds of awakening forest life. The cries are mostly from birds like the kookaburra. Even a baby koala does not want to spend a beautiful day like this in the darkness of his mother's pouch. It's a good feeling having the warmth of the morning sun on his back. Kangaroos are returning now to the cool shade of the forest after having spent the night feeding in more open areas. Here they will relax, sometimes sleeping, sometimes exploring lazily or playing, but mostly just spending the day in a much less active way. It's a time of day when the mother kangaroos in particular need to relax since it is no easy job to carry last winter's baby in the pouch. The joeys find their greatest security snuggled in the mother's pouch and continue to use it as a haven until they become quite large. It has advantages more than security too, since it can turn out to be a sort of moving lunch cart. After all, it's not every young animal who can get a meal of tender young sprouts without even having to move. The mother's job becomes progressively more difficult as her baby grows larger. The quarters in the pouch become even more cramped for the joey, and soon he'll no longer be able to crawl inside. Even now he's grown so big he has a tough time getting out. It isn't only the young kangaroos who find a mother's pouch a handy retreat. The pouch of the koala is a haven for her baby too. Like the kangaroos, koalas are also marsupials. 
And though the little koala cub can't fight enter or leave the pouch as fast as the young kangaroo does, to him it offers the same security. The koala, which grows to over 30 pounds, is a lazy animal which spends warm days like this feeding in the treetops and isn't very curious about what other forest creatures are doing. The kangaroos, however, are very careful to watch every movement and be alert for possible danger. A nearby native cat becomes the center of attention and he's on the lookout for something good to eat. A little gecko has chosen a bad time to show himself. Although the gecko senses something is wrong, it doesn't know what, nor does it seem to know from what direction the danger is coming. The native cat is no threat whatever to the kangaroos, and they continue their own lazy activities unconcerned. As the heat of the day is increased, some of the joeys settle down for naps deep in the pouches of the mothers. It is not especially comfortable for her, and daily grows more uncomfortable for the joey. Soon he will, like his parents, be content to spend the daylight hours in quiet companionship, resting in the peace of the forest shade. The joeys that have grown too large to sleep in the pouch anymore are content to leave the job of watching for danger to some of the older members of the kangaroo mob. It is much more enjoyable for the joey to simply relax under the affectionate groomings of his mother. Even though they remain alert, it isn't always the great gray kangaroos who detect approaching danger first. Their smaller relatives, like the rat kangaroo or betong, have many more enemies and often react faster when danger threatens. The mob boss has seen the betong run, but as yet he hasn't detected what startled the little animal. It's not long before he does. And soon, all of the forest creatures become very aware of the cause for alarm. Dingoes, the fierce wild dogs of Australia, can be very dangerous indeed when they are actively hunting. All the kangaroos consider these wild dogs, which hunt in packs, to be one of the deadliest enemies to have close by. And they don't take risks. Having left the intruding dingo dogs far behind in their sudden stampede from the area, the kangaroos quickly calmed down and resumed more placid activities. Such alarms as the kangaroos just went through happen often. As quickly as their panic mounted, it disappeared. In moments, it is impossible to detect from their actions that anything bothersome had happened at all. Once again, it is time to simply rest, take things easy, and perhaps take a little nap. For some, it's time to look for a choice bit of vegetation to eat. Though calm again, they're still alert to what's occurring around them. 
as they happen to see a small group of emus suddenly become rather nervous. It becomes time for the kangaroos to keep watch until they can determine what has alarmed the big flightless birds. The slight edginess that both the kangaroos and emus were sharing causes the kangaroo mob boss to investigate. He finds it has been caused by the appearance of an approaching carpet python. Though it's a large snake, it isn't venomous and of no real danger. And even though it is the first such snake ever encountered by the mob boss, he instinctively knows it is no menace to the kangaroo herd. The fear in the emus diminishes, and they become curious over what the snake is doing. Encouraged by their lessening fear, the kangaroo mob boss decides to look again. Convinced of the harmlessness of the snake, the boss kangaroo now returns to his mob to continue his watch for real dangers. The carpet python is actively hunting for something to eat and knows these big birds aren't the answer. And they, seeing that this well-patterned reptile is no threat, lose their fear and go about their affairs, as do the kangaroos. The acute sensors in the tongue of the snake have suddenly caught the spoor of possible prey, and the reptile's movements become more direct. What has attracted him is a large frilled lizard. It doesn't look very ferocious right now, but it can be. The instinctive defense action of the lizard in fanning out his neck skin to make himself look larger, along with his mock attacks, have discouraged the snake, and it won't be bothered anymore. Nearby and unconcerned about the disturbance between the reptiles, a molly fowl tends to its nest. It is one of the strangest nests in the bird world, a huge mound of very fine forest debris with a depression in the middle which is where the molly fowl lays its eggs, then uses its feet to throw gravel over them, or scrape it away. The bird depends upon the heat of the sun to incubate the eggs. If it gets too hot, the eggs are buried deeper, too cool, and some debris is kicked away, so the sun's rays can better warm them. A mound this size is not built by one bird in one nesting season alone. It is cumulative, the buildup of debris occurring over many seasons and possibly done by many birds. Even during midday in this land of the kangaroo, some activity is always occurring. A big hungry lizard called a goanna is on the prowl for a meal. The goanna is not choosy in what he eats. Rats, mice, and insects are prey. Even this numbat could be in trouble. The numbat is a marsupial anteater, and while not normally the goanna's prey, chances are the little mammal would be killed and eaten. But seeing a numbat and catching it are two different matters.
Unlike most marsupials, which are nocturnal animals, the numbat roams about primarily by day. He is such an elusive little animal that the goanna has decided to give up the pursuit. The numbat, for his part, will now look for termites in peace. The goanna has decided to try for a meal of molly fowl eggs, and there's hardly anything he likes to eat more. The molly fowl, however, is not going to abandon its eggs to this reptilian predator. This is simply not the Goanna's day. As always in the Wild Kingdom, water attracts animals. And in Western Australia, these areas, called billabongs, draw many of the eucalyptus forest inhabitants. Billabongs in the land of the kangaroo attract abundant waterfowl, but also many land animals. The dingoes come here each day to drink and to watch curiously the actions of the swimming birds beyond their reach. There's plenty of food beneath the surface for the diving birds, both fish and bottom vegetation. For the dingoes, it's a place where they may find prey of almost any kind, including those that may pose a problem, like this side-necked turtle. The dingoes may be fierce animals, but they aren't foolhardy. They know that the beak on this turtle is razor sharp and could easily injure a tender nose that carelessly comes too close. They're intrigued by this hard-shelled aquatic reptile and want to make a meal of it. Only they're not quite sure how to go about it. Escape for the side-necked turtle means getting back into the billabong's protective waters. And this means the dingoes will have to look for prey of a different kind. Cormorants, also called shags, love to fish and frolic in the billabongs. With the nesting season approaching, one has already begun to build its nest. Australian pelicans come here in numbers to compete with the cormorants in their incessant search for food. There's always an unsuccessful bird following a successful angler, hoping to snatch his catch if possible. Competition is always stiff, and even the dingo is startled at the squabbling of the darters. These birds are closely related to the anhinga, or snake bird, and they're excellent fishers who can outswim their quarry underwater. Some of the Australian pelicans in this billabong suddenly find themselves swimming over a school of small fish, and they quickly take advantage of their good fortune. Wherever they are, the pelicans and the cormorants are superb fishers. The dingoes have tired of the billabong and leave it to the darters drying their wings in the bright sunlight. 
since all the waterfowl are too far out of reach. It's time to try to find some prey on land. Now the white dingo has spied something new, a ghoul's goanna. But just as he was cautious with the turtle, so too he's wary of the teeth of the big lizard. Though the dingo could probably kill the monitor if he attacked with full fury, the wild dog respects the defenses the ghoul's goanna can muster. His nipping at it has little effect on the lizard's scaly armor plating, and his own nose is soft and could be very painfully bitten if he became careless. At the moment, he's waiting for the right opening, and the lizard's just as determined not to give him one. Teeth and armor of the monitor lizard are not its only defense. The tail can lash much like a whip, and the dingo is wary of being hit by it. This time, the encounter has to be considered a draw. The dingo's activities have left him on his own, and so now he heads for the pack ignoring ever-present koalas perched overhead. The pack, playing and exploring, have moved close to the kangaroos again. And catching the scent, they are once again on the hunt. A sense of fear is ignited in the kangaroos. Large and small, all of the kangaroos are suddenly afraid. The first mild fear quickly becomes a stampede to safety. This is the law of survival, here in the land of the kangaroo. All over the world, even in the most remote areas of Australia, man has begun to encroach with such endeavors as lumbering, farming, ranching, and development. Little by little, areas of natural habitat, like the land of the kangaroo, are being altered or destroyed and made unsuitable for animal life previously native to the area. Many of the animals are so closely tied to their form of habitat that they can adapt to no other. If it is destroyed, the animal too will become extinct. All these creatures, whether common or endangered, live in harmony with their environment. Only man has the power to destroy it or save it for his own sake and for the sake of generations yet to follow, man must make every effort to preserve natural habitat areas everywhere. By learning to live in harmony with nature, man himself can play the most vital role in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.